Well, welcome everyone to 180 U-Turn, the talk show that features some of the greatest conversion stories of our time. Stories of men and women who are on the highway to hell when they encountered a Damascus Road event that completely turned their lives around. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant. I'm broadcasting live from the Life Change Center in Sun City, Arizona, a Christ Center recovery facility for alcohol abuse, drug, and sexual addictions. For more information on their rehab services and their weekly meetings and special events, just go out to their website and check it out at GWP. Arizona.org. That's GWP Arizona.org. And hey, if you want to write me, my email address for the show is Steve at 180U-turn.com. That's Steve at 180 Y O U Y O U T U R N. Had a senior moment there. Happy to take your calls and I really enjoy your verses, but yes, keep those theological questions from not coming through my email because I don't have that kind of time to answer it. Well, we're on day four. We're talking with Nancy Breezy's story. If you've missed her story, because as everybody knows, this is Thursday. We call it conversion. Some people call it Holy Thursday. I, you know, It's the fourth episode. If you've missed any of her previous episodes and you want to watch the show in chronology, I exhort you to go back out to the YouTube and watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in a row to get the idea of what's behind her story and how today's going to be kind of a blockbuster turnaround for her. And Nancy, I, I always think about everybody's day that they came to the Lord, right? A lot of people have a date. I do. It was Valentine's Day. I was oh. saved on Valentine's Day of all days. <laughs> but everybody has a date. That was your, gonna, this date we're going to talk about is your date, right? Mm -hmm. So how long ago did this happen? It was August 31st, 2008. So a little bit, 12 years. So 12 years. Older, yeah. And you remember it. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about it because you're, you're finally, you, you finally have all these years you've been invited. You're finally going to go to this place uh, where, where the, you're, you're asked, your girlfriend now, I want to go to church, right? Mm -hmm. And she's going to take you there. So talk a little bit about that. Um, about that day. That day when, hold on, sorry. No, that's all right. Hey, listen, you know, like I said, you, you prayed with him, right? And you started crying out to God. Yeah, so, so after um, when he was, he asked us to pray, the pastor asked us to pray. And um, they... It was another, I'm having all those awe moments, like, whoa, mm -hmm. whoa, whoa. And this was another big thing for me because, again, from the Catholic background, just a priest is holy enough, mm -hmm. holy one, to pray over everything. You are silent. And so this was a, a pastor. He wasn't a priest. He was a pastor praying over my life and caring about my life. Mm -hmm. And um, then my friend also was there. And she also was praying for my life, but together in oneness. And so I was like drawn back in a way because it was so new to me. And I, I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, but he basically said, Nancy, can you say something? And I said, no, I can't. I, I can't say anything. I can't pray because again, I'm not holy enough. Mm -hmm. to do what you guys are doing right now. That that's what I felt inside. I didn't mm -hmm. say it, but that's kind of what mm -hmm. I was feeling inside. And um, so they just kept praying some more. They kept praying. And he asked me again, Nancy, can you pray? And I said, I, no, I can't. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he didn't give up. He, he just kept praying. He kept praying over my life. And so was my friend. And then he asked me for the third time. He says, Nancy, can you say something? And I broke down. I said, God, I, I, I want you. I want to go home to you. Christ, I believe in you. Please take me. Please save me. Mm. And that was all that I said. And after that, that's just when everything changed. Mm -hmm. Now, that was your salvation prayer, mm -hmm. right? It was my own personal thing. Right. Yeah. And interesting that it happened three times. I mean, a lot of threes in the, mentioned in the Bible, a lot of mm -hmm. threes going on. Uh, but he, it's sometimes we have to pray through with people. Right, mm -hmm. we have to pray through to, for for their own deliverance or their own consciousness. Hey, I gotta, I need to speak to the Lord here right now. Mm -hmm. All right, talk talk to me about this. Okay, now you have this experience, mm -hmm. and your friend knows you've had this experience now, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I'm I'm certain she's very happy about this, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what's next steps? Like, okay, if if you're like I am, I got converted and I knew nothing. Yeah, I knew N nothing. Not a thing. I have had an event. <laughs> I've had an experience. That's all I know. Yeah, I, I knew nothing. I didn't know anything of what to do next. All I knew was that I was joyful. Mm -hmm. I had peace and nothing else mattered. Everything just mm -hmm. was just gone. So I 
yeah, I, I just left joyfully and I didn't expect to receive any trials the next day or any testings the next mm -hmm. day. I thought it was just going to go keep flowing and joy and, and mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> and did it? <laughs> well, joy kept going, but trials and testings mm -hmm. came right away. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say that, I said, because I think a lot of people think, hey, I accepted the Lord, game over, mm -hmm. troubles are gone. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the fire gets stronger <laughs> of trials. <laughs> well, like, give, give me an example. You've, you know, because I had this person in, pr I remember this person in prison specifically, and uh, I'll just shorten it by, ba because her basic thought was, hey, I've, I've come to the Lord, and so things should be better now in prison. And then she got a letter from her husband for divorce. She got child custody taken away from her. She'll never see her kids till she's there 18. And she was a teacher and she'll never teach in Arizona again. Uh -huh. This is all after she came forward. So she had this expectation. Mm -hmm. Things are great. Yeah. What happened to you? Well, <laughs> right when I woke up, I got a message um, from my Muslim friend. And she said, Nancy, we're gonna, we can go to the mosque today. Let's go. We both had the day off of work. And um, I remember exactly where, where my bed was positioned, and I knew exa remember exactly where I threw my phone. And mm -hmm. I just dropped on my knees and I said, what do I do, God? I don't know what to do right now. And um, I just felt the tug to have to just open the Bible and read. Uh, and so I opened up the Bible. The pastor this is something you've never done before. No, my, my first Bible was what my pastor gave me. And so, so I you opened it up randomly. Opened up, yeah. And that was the first time where... I just literally dropped to my knees and I just started praying. I didn't do sign of cross, nothing that I grew up with. It was just in me. I just cried. I just fell and just mm -hmm. cried before him. And so I randomly opened the Bible to Colossians chapter 3 and I just started mm -hmm. reading it. And as I was reading it and reading about the new creation and no longer being of the old self, that was the first time I heard God talk to me and said, Nancy, you have found me like how you wanted. Now continue with mm -hmm. me. Those are of the old. You are in the new. Just keep following me. And so those words gave me the boldness to tell her that I found Jesus Christ and I will no longer become Muslim. How'd you take that? Well, it took some, took a lot of talking, mm -hmm. uh, but we eventually lost friendship. Mm -hmm. It was tough. Yeah. It was tough. It was hard. All right. So your testing came quickly and a test because you were really going to be a, turn out to be a gal that's going to follow Islam. And now the Lord interrupted you at the last yeah. second. Yeah. Saved you at the last second from yeah. that. What you I think what your pastor call it the road of destruction, right? Yeah. Saved me from All destruction. All right. So so now you got saved. Now you've cracked the Bible open for the first time. What was that like? Just well. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're reading it for the first time. It's just the thought and the idea that God can speak to me whom grew up knew I was never holy enough mm -hmm. that only the priest can receive the word, only the priest can interpret. Mm -hmm. Only the priest can get all that stuff. Only he can wash somebody's mm -hmm. feet. And then to read and the word speaks to me mm -hmm. that it was so new. I, I find it fascinating for people. Now, you're, we're both from Catholic backgrounds. I thought, well, if you're going to begin a book, you should begin at the beginning, right? Oh. So I started in the book of Genesis, oh. like a fool. You know? <laughs> and I, I read it, right? Yeah. I, read, I read the first 20, maybe 30 pages. And I, I stopped, I put it reverently aside, and I said, God, I, I'm trying to love you, but this is really dry. Yeah. You know. Actually, some people are surprised, um, but just this year, I'm halfway through the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But for the first 12 years of my walk with Christ, the New Testament was only where I could mm -hmm. stay. I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I wasn't ready yet to go in there, and as, as if... The Lord just really wanted to me understand mm -hmm. to the depths of Him, um, because He just knows how I am. Mm -hmm. so I, I think the Word is so important in, in most Christians' lives, and I I always was a Bible person. As after my conversion, I was brought up that way, had good mentoring in the Lord. But it wasn't until I went into prison that I found the need was so great mm -hmm. that I I did not have much to. I thought I had a lot to share. I didn't, mm -hmm. and. And one of the girls came up to me early on and said, hey, Steve, I hope you're in the Word because we feel like if you're not, you're going to be exhausted and have nothing to tell us in about four to six yeah. weeks. I mean, wow, thanks a lot. You know, I mean, so, but my, my reasoning thinking there is that it's feeding for us. 
Mm -hmm. And many times I have what I call leftover verses in my life. Mm -hmm. well, I have this verse in my heart all week. I don't know why. It doesn't seem to be doing anything for me. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden I'm engaged in something. I'm at Fry's food store. I'm talking to some guy at the gas station. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, oh my gosh, this verse is for this guy. Yeah. And then the Lord opens up. Now, when you started reading it, was it hard read for you? Or no? Uh, it spoke to you right away? or? Well, for the Colossians chapter 3, yeah, mm -hmm. it spoke right away. It was clear. It was very, very clear what the Lord was instructing me in mm -hmm. that in that moment. Um, but from starting from the New Testament and going onward, um, no, it, it made really mm -hmm. sense, made very clear sense. It wasn't difficult for me to, to understand uh, who he was and what he came for. And did you start figuring out if there's verses, this is a verse that I really like, I keep it? Yeah, yeah. there's that, again, words, verses that were speaking to me and I mm -hmm. never knew, I was not taught that could mm -hmm. be done, mm -hmm. that it can become that personal for me. And life changing. And life changing. For life changing. One hundred percent. Okay, so now you're you're in school. You're 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 uh, you're not going to college at this time, right? Um, I was in the process, yes, to okay. to get into college. Okay, and now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you have an opportunity to go on a mission trip. And did you ever think in your wildest dreams? Mm -hmm. You, that not only would you find God, and but now you might even go be a missionary for His yeah. purposes. Well, I knew from the day one when the Lord saved me and the Lord found me um, in that little office of the church, mm -hmm. um, I knew that He was going to call me out because mm -hmm. of what the Lord has pulled me from is not meant for me to just sit in the mm -hmm. pews of the church. Mm -hmm. It's meant to do something more for His glory. And so I understood that right away, and I actually wanted to leave ASAP right when the Lord found me but my pastor with much wisdom said you're not ready yet mm -hmm. you need some time more in the Lord uh, be discipled in him mm -hmm. before you go out there and so um, being as the elder over me I said okay you know what I'll, I'll mm -hmm. do as you said um, so as I prayed a lot about it um, God revealed to me um, that when before Jesus ascended he said wait in Jerusalem until my promise comes to you and then from there you'll go from Jerusalem and onward to Samaria. Mm -hmm. And so I understood what the Lord was instructing me was, as of right now, as Jerusalem was the hometown for the apostles, Massachusetts is your hometown. And this is where you need to stay and serve until I have put mm -hmm. my anointment in you and have prepared you well enough to go onwards. And so for the first five years of my walk in the Lord was um, to be on the streets of Massachusetts and to be even a witness in my family who I received the most persecution from. Then. Yes, on my own. Oh. <laughs> Wherever I went, you know, whatever job mm. I had, whether it was customers, I was everywhere I was now, going. The missionary school in 2014, I mean, where did this, ult you finally landed at the school and where did, where did it launch you to? Where was your first yeah, trip? Yeah, so uh, the missionary school that I went to was also Slavic based. Mm -hmm. And so that is how I found out because I went to a Slavic church because the Lord did not let me leave from that Slavic community where he found me. And so that's how I heard about God will provide missionary mm -hmm. school. And... Um, so when my fifth year came, that's when the Lord said, I'm sending you out. And so I went by faith, you know, and I didn't know anyone. I just did. And what's amazing is that my semester was the first semester to, ha to have international people. Mm. So I kind of say we were the guinea pig <laughs> in some ways because um, of translation and stuff. Now things are fully in English. Um, but we were the first international class. And so it was quite um, exciting, but yet humbling at the same time to be put into a place where I'm going to full time hear about the Lord and not be persecuted for it. Mm -hmm. Because I was persecuted by my family mm -hmm. if I read the Bible, if I was praying, if I was going to church. Mm -hmm. So it was big change. Did they? Did you finally have to reveal to them? That of all your childhood depression and anxiety and things that were going on. Yes, eventually they asked me my story, and because mm -hmm. um, they were very curious to know how did this Puerto Rican American get to a Slavic church, right. how did that happen, and so yes, they they eventually found mm -hmm. out about everything and prayed me through a lot of um, wounds that I never knew was never healed. I find it amazing that a let's just say a a, a different type like a Slavic fellowship. Mm -hmm 
can be so transforming. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're not even in that ethnicity, you're not no. even in that background. You know, God got his people everywhere. Yeah. And he will work through his people and those people will, will be a blessing to mm -hmm. people who don't know him and they'll come to him. Now, when when you were a missionary, you, you after your missionary trip, your first one, you came back. Yeah. What so, did you think? What did you think? Hey, is this something I want to do forever? Or yes. I don't know yet? Or? So the missionary school sent me to Ukraine and that's where I served for almost about two months. And from there a little bit uh, for a few weeks, I served in Austria. And when I came back, um, I knew it was going to be a forever thing. And the only reason why I came back is because the Lord was calling me on to marriage. Um, but if it wasn't for that, my tickets were one way. So I was going to be gone mm. for a very long time. Well, but I, the I, Lord I, called me back for marriage. I've heard so. the marriage issue is also one way. So <laughs> well, yeah. I, I've heard that. Okay. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, this is, this is what I'm talking about. I, I like the idea that your pastor prayed three times. He didn't give up. No, he didn't. And finally, the, the Lord broke your heart yeah. to call out to him. I love this verse. It's, it's Many times I found this to be true. You know, I, I pray, I pray, I run out of English. I sometimes will pray in a language I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I, the Bible says there's groanings too deep, Romans says. Yeah. And my favorite, when all else fails, call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Right? 36 times in the Old and New Testament, yeah. call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I just say his name. Nothing more. That's it. Just his name. And call on him until I get peace about something or until I see direction. Yes. So I like the ability of people not giving up in prayer. Yeah. And believe you me, not everybody just comes first time you pray or whatever. So yeah. I totally get that. Yeah, yeah. He well, listen, to, I, I want to talk tomorrow. We're going to talk about everything that you're into now, which is a whole nother kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that because I'm really excited. To, it's, it's, it's so many things like your, your life. You never saw any of this coming. He pre-warned me. Oh, he did. He, he prepared me, but he, I didn't know to the full degree of, mm -hmm. of certain things. So I totally. Good thing he doesn't show me everything because I think I would be freaked out by yeah. it personally. <laughs> well, listen, I just want to say we're going to be back tomorrow for the final episode of Nancy's story. We're going to talk about all the things that she's into now here in Arizona. So, and if you need more information on the Life Change Center and their rehab services, weekly meetings, and special events, just go out to their website at GWP. Arizona.org. That's GWP, Arizona.org. So until next time, I'm Steve Savant, and remember, no one's outside the reach of God. No, not one.